Hey everybody, uh, welcome to the week nine. Uh, actually, the weeks are a little off sometimes, but this is the chapter five quiz access. I, I've noticed that as they've revamped the course, sometimes the weeks don't match. Don't worry about that. Uh, instead, we'll worry about the chapters. So this is chapter five. Um, and we're actually gonna look at not number one, but number twos on the, on the chapter five quiz access. So uh, here's all of our information. Uh, Laker company reports uh, the January purchase and sales data for their product. Um, and then they want us to compute the gross profit for the month uh, using all four of the different inventory methods. So this is kind of a, uh, an involved problem. And then it wants us to, to answer which meal method yields uh, the highest gross profit. And does the gross profit use weighted average, uh, using weighted average fall between the two, et cetera. So uh, I, really the, the main job at hand for us is to figure out, uh, first of all, our uh, cost of goods sold, our gross profit, sorry, which means we're gonna have to figure out uh, our cost of goods sold. Uh, for the four different methods. So that's what we, I guess, that's the job at hand here. So let's see, the company uses a periodic inventory system. Um, this is important. Okay, you need to look and understand whether it's periodic or perpetual before you get started because you'll use a different methodology uh, depending on whether or not it's periodic or perpetual. So because this one's periodic, it means we're just gonna look at our total units uh, and total costs at the end of the month and we'll go from there. So I'll, I'll try to explain that process. Um, all right, so the first one we're gonna do is specific identification. And what specific identification means, um, actually, you know, before I even do that, let's just figure out our sales because our sales, this amount is gonna be the same no matter what method we use because the methods only give us different costs. Okay, so the sales, let's see. So we had 214 units at the end of the month. That's our ending inventory. Uh, and so to figure out our sales, we just have to figure out how many we sold. Um, so if we had 394 right here, total units available for the month. So 394 minus the number we have left at the end of the month tells us that we sold 180 units during the month. And then it tells us, let's see. That our retail price for the units we're selling are 150. Oh, it also just tells us right there, 180 units sold. So 180 units times $15 per unit, which means we'll have sales of $2,700. We can put this right here for all of them. And then we'll use these different methods to estimate uh, our cost of goods sold and ultimately to estimate and then and then calculate our gross profit. Okay, so let's look at, so with specific identification, what that means is that you know which units you actually sold. So a lot of times in real life, companies like uh, car dealerships, they'll use specific identification because each time they sell a piece of inventory, they can tell you exactly which piece of inventory they sold. It's most often used for products that are expensive and that it's worth the effort of tracking exactly which item you sold. So we're gonna need more information and it tells us for the specific identification, ending inventory consists of 214 units uh, where 180 are from the January 30th purchase, five are from the January 20th purchase and 29 are from beginning inventory. Well, they're not making it easy on us here. So to figure out our cost of goods sold, we're gonna say, okay, so our ending inventory has 180 units from the January 30th purchase. So all 180 of these units are still 
in inventory at the end of the month. Um, and then five are from the January 20th purchase. So if we had, if we purchased 67 units on January 20th and there's five left, that means we must have sold 62 of those January 20th units. which cost us $5. And then it tells us 29 are from beginning inventory. So at the beginning of the month, we had 147 units. So if there's 29 left of those, we must have sold 118 of those units that were there at beginning inventory, which cost us $6. So again, they're not making it super easy on us. We have to figure out since we need to figure out our cost of goods sold, we got to figure out um, which units we sold. So we sold 180 units. 118 of them are these units that cost $6. And 62 of the ones we sold were these units that cost $5. So if I take 118 times six, that's $708. That's the, that was the cost of these units that we sold. And then if I take 62 times $5, I get $310, which is the cost of the 62 units from the January 20th purchase we sold. So if I add those together, I get 708 plus 310 or $1,018. So that's our cost of goods sold using specific identification. And then sales minus cost of goods sold is our gross profit. Using the weighted average method, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna look at our total cost of our units, which is $2,027 divided by our total number of units. And that's gonna give us an average cost per unit. So if I had $2,027, whoops, $27 worth of units available, and I divide that by 394 available units, that gives me $5 and about 14 cents per unit. And so then if I take that and I multiply it by the 180 I sold, you can see that my cost of goods sold was $926. Let's see, it says round the cost per unit to two decimal places. So I better do my double check my rounding, right? But again, to find my average cost per unit, I'll take the total cost of the units, 2,027 and divide it by the total number of units, 394. That gives me $5.14. So then I'm gonna round 5.14 times 180 units. I get 925.20. And I think it tells me here to round to the nearest whole dollar. So we're just gonna go $925. Using first in, first out, we'll assume that the oldest 180 units are the units we sold. So we would assume that we sold uh, all 147 of the $6 units plus, that's 180 minus 147, plus another 33 of these $5 units. Now I go 147 times $6 is 882. And then 33 times $5 is 165. 882 plus 165 is $1,047. So with first in, first out, we just assume that we sold the oldest units. And they add up to $1,047. And then with last in, first out, we'll assume that we sold the newest units. So we'll assume we sold 
all 180 of these $4.50 units. I can do the math or it has it right here. So my cost of goods sold will be 180 units times 450 or $810. All right, so we can see, let me check my work, make sure we're good. All right, so we can see that in a period of rising prices, you can see, I'm mean, sorry, this is falling prices. Our cost went from $6 down to $5 down to $4.50. In a period like that, um, first in, first out is going to give us our highest, um, our highest cost of goods sold, which will give us our lowest gross profit. Last in, first out will give us our lowest cost of goods sold, which will give us our highest gross profit. And then weighted average will be somewhere in the middle because it's an average. So that pattern always holds true in a period of falling costs. In a period of rising costs, it's going to switch. So then in a period of rising cost, our last in first out will give us the highest cost of goods sold and the lowest gross profit. And first in first out will give us our lowest cost of goods sold and highest gross profit and average will be in the middle. So that happens, uh, that relationship is something you get used to as you do it more with more practice. So I'm gonna to return to the question so I can answer requirement two, which of the methods yields the highest gross profit? So again, if we want, we can look back here and see the highest gross profit comes from last in, first out. Does the gross profit using weighted average fall between first in, first out and last in, first out? Yes, it does. If costs were rising instead of falling, which method would yield the highest gross profit? That was kind of what I just explained. In that case, it would be first in, first out. We'll double check. Make sure we're good, and we are. So hopefully that was helpful, and uh, good luck on the rest of the assignment.